Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is Bits, Bytes, and Binary. Part 3, or How to Destroy a Rocket with Only 16 Bits. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what happens when things go wrong. I'm going to start off with a story about a rather expensive error where the source of the error was the programmers chose the wrong number of bits. We're going to go back to the year 1996. The European Space Agency has a new rocket, the Ariane 5, which is, as you might guess, a follow-on to the Ariane 4. On board this new Ariane 5 rocket are four satellites worth $370 million. The rocket launches... Three, two, one, fire! They're going well, and then 37 seconds into the flight, the rocket starts veering wildly off course. It starts breaking apart, and ultimately, it has to be destroyed. What went wrong? What went wrong was, in one place, the program controlling the rockets tried to store information in 16 bits. As you might recall, in 16 bits, we can store numbers as large as 2 to the 16, which means we can store numbers between 0 and 65,535. And while this number was large enough for the Ariane 4, the predecessor to the Ariane 5, the Ariane 5 had performance characteristics that caused it to run much faster. And the value that it tried to stick in this to the 16-bit storage location did not fit. And when it tried to put the value into 16 bits, what ended up happening is we had a condition called overflow. And what can happen in overflow is we can have a really large number and add one to it and end up with zero, or we can have a large positive number, add one to it, and actually end up with a large negative number. So we're going to take a look at this phenomenon in a minute. This phenomenon is also related to another famous problem, which is the Y2K problem. I know this is a little bit before some of your time, so you may th be thinking, yeah, my parents might be interested in this lecture. But... Um, what happened with the Y2K problem is that programmers starting in the 50s were trying to save space in their computer programs. And so when they tried to store the year, they didn't store the full year with all four digits. Instead, they would store just two digits. So here's a little table, for example. So let's say the programmer was interested in storing the year 1952. They would just store 52. And then when that 52 got read from computer memory, the computer would just know, oh, I need to add a 1-9 to it. And so this would go on, 1984, to store an 84, 95, to store 95. But the problem, as you can see here, is when we start getting closer and closer to the year 2000, the programmers realize they have a bit of a problem. If they just store 0, 0 and they do not fix their program, the program is going to think that the year 0, 0 represents the year 1900 not the year 2000. And so this was the Y2K problem. And what ended up happening was we had to spend millions and millions of dollars rewriting computer programs so that when the year 2000 hit, the computers didn't think we were back in the 1900s. All right, so let's take a look at how Overflow actually works. I'm going to show you two different versions of Overflow. In the first version of this, we're going to take a look at what happens when we're storing positive integers. So I'm going to stick with 8 bits, although typically these numbers will be much larger, but it'll be easier to understand if we only use 8 bits. So in 8 bits, if I'm only storing positive numbers, we can store the numbers from 0 to 255. And so suppose we have the number 255 stored in a particular storage location. So here you can see, you know, I've got all my bits on. This is the largest possible number I can store in 8 bits. And then I try and add 1 to it. What happens? Well, the natural thing, if you recall our last video on how to how to add uh, in binary, and who can forget that video, um, what happened was uh, when we added one, we had that carryover, and we had a carryover, and we had a carryover, and we had a carryover, and it finally carried over to the far left. And you can see what happens is the ninth bit gets flipped to one. But guess what? We don't have nine bits. We only have eight bits because this particular value is only being stored in 8 bits. So what happens is that that ninth bit gets discarded. There's no space for it. And what has happened is our 
very large value consisting of all ones has flipped to a very low value consisting of all zeros. So in terms of what's happening for decimal, we have a 255, which is the equivalent of having all the bits in a particular byte switched to one. We have 255, we've added one to 255 and we've actually ended up with zero. So this is overflow. So for our next example, we're gonna take a look at what happens when we have a large positive number, but we're storing in a space that is allowed to store both positive and negative numbers. So in this particular case, again, I'm just going to store all of our data in a single byte, which allows us to store numbers between positive 127 and negative 128. Now, there are a number of different ways to store negative numbers on the computer. The simplest way to store a negative number on the computer is something called sign magnitude representation. And sign magnitude representation, what we're going to do is we're going to take the high end bit and we're going to go ahead and say, if it's a zero, we have a positive number. And if it's a one, we have a negative number. So in the case of our single byte, the way this would work is the seven low end bits would go ahead and represent our number. And then the eighth bit would represent whether we had a positive number or a negative number. It turns out that this has a number of problems, though. Most notably, it gives us both a positive zero and a negative zero. So if all the bits are zero, that's our regular zero, and if all the bits are zero except for the leftmost bit is one, that's a negative zero. So that's kind of a problem. So there are several other schemes used, but the most common one is something called two's complement. I'm not going to go into detail on two's complement. I think we spend enough time on math for today. But the key point on all of these schemes is that leftmost bit is going to represent whether or not we have a positive or negative number. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take our largest positive number, which again, leftmost bit is zero. That represents we have a positive number. And all the other seven bits are one. This represents a positive 127. We're going to go ahead and add one to it. And you can see what happens here is that leftmost bit flips to one. This means we have a negative number. And in fact, using this standard two's complement representation, this is actually a negative 128. So what has happened is we've had a very large positive number, 127. We've added one to it. We've got 128. So this is, again, an example of overflow. So when you're working with a computer program or you're working with some sort of application and you think everything's going great and suddenly your bank account gets reset to zero or your bank account which was at a million dollars gets set to negative a million, what's probably happening here is overflow. This probably means whoever wrote the program did not do a very good job. Okay, I've got one more type of error I want to uh, introduce you. And this is, I suppose it's not actually technically an error. What we're gonna see here is that when we're working with binary numbers, our intuition on what results should come up is not necessarily correct. And so what I mean by that is we're going to add some numbers together um, and the results should be very, very obvious to us when working with decimal, but we'll see that the computer has some different ideas on, on what the answer should be. So what I'm running here is this is the Python interpreter. This is a way in which I can interactively enter commands in the Python programming language. Uh, this is the programming language that CS105 students will be using a little bit later on this quarter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some numbers here. So let's let's ask the Python interpreter to take 0 0.1 and add it to 0 0.2. And, and what is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2? Well, naturally, it's 0 0.3. Let's see if the Python interpreter agrees with us. Whoa, what is this? Okay, let's try another one. Let's ask the Python interpreter to add 0 0.7 to 0 0.1. Seems pretty clear this should be 0 0.8, right? Okay, Python interpreter, let's see what you got. What? Okay, so what, what, what is going on here? Is, is this computer just completely messed up? No, what's actually going on here is that numbers that we can represent in decimal in a set number of decimal places is not the same base 10 and base 2. So you may recall that there are certain numbers that we cannot represent in a fixed number of decimal places. So let's say I tell you to write the decimal equivalent of two thirds. Well, 
What is the decimal number equivalent of two thirds? Well, you might say it's 0 0.67, but that's not actually accurate. I could say, no, 0 0.66667 is a more accurate representation. And in fact, the correct representation would th be this, 0 0.6 repeating, where this bar above the six represents a repeating decimal where that six is repeated forever, ever, ever, and ever, and ever. So the problem we're running into here is it turns out that the binary number has different repeating numbers than the decimal number system. And in particular, the number 0 0.1 and base 10, you know, obviously it's very finite, 0 0.1. There you go, that's the answer. It does not have a finite value in binary. In binary, it's 0, 0.0 and then 0011 repeating. So, for example, 0 0.00011000110011 0011 and so on. And there's no set number of, there's no finite number of places after the decimal point. So what's happening here is we're taking these numbers where we are sure that there's a set number of decimal places like 0 0.7 plus 1, 0.1, and we're getting a number that does not have a natural endpoint. And so that's why these numbers are slightly off. As a result of this, programmers are cautioned not to use floating point numbers when representing money, because you will get these slight variations that will cause your customer to be like, wait, what? What is going on here? All right, so there's obviously a lot more that can go wrong with computing. And in fact, we'll see some of it later in the quarter. But for now, that's it for a little exploration of what can go wrong when we're working with binary numbers.